Hey everyone, this is Meyer, and welcome back to my Vital Sound Design series. In this video, what we're gonna be doing is trying to make a driving, uplifting trance mid bass sound. So this is what the sound sounds like. And of course, in context. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. What I'm gonna do is take one of my empty vital tracks and just bring it up here to the kick and bass bus like so. Go ahead and rename it mid bass and give it a nice sort of bluish color, which is what I like doing. And to get started, I'm gonna take my MIDI from the sub bass and just rename it mid bass. Of course, assign the color as well. And getting started with this, what we wanna do is, I'm just gonna keep it really simple, and we're just gonna do triple 16th notes. So I'm gonna set the grid to 16th notes, and because these are already playing eighth notes, what I can do is simply bring them over and duplicate them three times. I'm leaving this first spot on each beat empty for the kick to come in. So it's just gonna be these next three. And what I'm gonna do is grab the ends of these and just shorten them ever so slightly so they're not really overlapping too much. This can help get a little, give a little bit of separation. So let's go ahead and see what this sounds like right off the bat. Not gonna sound like much now because we haven't really done too much with the sound, but uh, let's see what it sounds like. Okay, that's sounding fine. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and find filter one and I'm going to change this to a 24 dB per octave ladder filter. And what I wanna try to do is find the cutoff point where I want it to be closed. That's sounding good. And we're gonna use envelope two as a sort of pluck envelope. So no attack, a little bit of release, no sustain and really short decay. And we'll play around with this decay time and this amount here on the cutoff. I'm gonna click and drag this to the cutoff just so that we get a really nice plucky sound. This decay and this amount are gonna be the two most important controls. Sounding good, I'm gonna drop this down an octave and add a few more voices, maybe five voices. Now I'm gonna add in oscillator two, where I'm gonna also set this to five voices and bring the detune down so we'll mix it in. Of course, we wanna make sure these are all routed to filter one. Sounding pretty good. And I'm gonna add in oscillator three as well. This one's gonna be an octave up, and maybe we'll only use three voices for this. So bring the detune down. And for this, I may turn the phase randomization off so that it re-triggers at the same point every place. Sounding good. Lastly, we're gonna add in the white noise. What I want this to do is be very subtle and add a little bit to the high end. So we're gonna turn on the, the sort of phase re, random re-trigger so it'll start at random places. And of course we need to make sure it loops back in case it starts somewhere at the end. We don't want it just abruptly cutting off. So let's hear what this sounds like. Helps it cut through just a little bit. So this is sounding good for now. I may come back to this in a moment, but next I wanna go over and move to the effects section. So the first effect I wanna add is some sort of distortion or saturation. This can really help the sound just kind of punch through the mix. 
really boosts the low mid. Sounding pretty good. Now I'm going to add the multiband compressor and this can be this can be a lot so we want to just add enough that it helps kind of squash the sound a little bit but not so much that we're just really squeezing the life out of it. Sounding good. Next, I'm going to add an EQ. What I want to do is take the really, really low end out because that's going to be taken up by the sub bass. Maybe boost the highs ever so slightly. And we can use this third bell to find a place in the low mids that sounds pleasing. And lastly, what I want to do is add a ping pong delay. This is just going to really help give the sound some space. Um, sometimes it's better to use this instead of reverb, although you can also add a little bit of reverb. And what we want to do is I'm going to set one to a dotted eighth and the other to just normal eighth notes and turn the feedback down and the mix down and just ever so slightly give it some space and movement. Maybe I'll bring the feedback down to about 15% and the mix to about 15%. Sounds pretty good. Now let's go ahead and try mixing this in with the kick and the bass, the sub bass. And what can help here is adding a sidechain compressor. So I'm gonna add the compressor, could do this with LFO tool too, and just grab it from the kick. So I'm sidechaining from the kick, and I wanna only trigger it when uh, when it, you know, on that click. So what I'll do is set the frequency, I don't know, maybe 300 hertz, so it'll trigger on that top end, maybe about 50 milliseconds of release, no attack, and a really sharp ratio. Now let's hear what this sounds like in context. here without it I mean you really can tell the difference I think this might be the root note. So this would be like if you're playing the intro and outro, what is your root note 
you're playing. I don't think I have any of that yet. And let's see if this sounds better an octave lower. So I can select this note, bring it down. Nope, better. Awesome, sounding great. In the next video, I think we'll move on to making a pluck sound. See you then.